Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak this morning. We have, um, as Bayard has mentioned, uh, started work on a systematic review, which we hope will allow us to set the scene as we move forward uh, during the course of, of uh, today's discussion. Um, we had provisionally titled this presentation uh, the burden of NCDs in humanitarian crises, a systematic review. And as we moved forward, we realized that we didn't actually have sufficient information to do justice to that title. So for the time being, we have some provisional findings to discuss with you, and we'll talk a little bit about the gaps uh, surrounding current reporting and current evidence to support this, this particularly interesting topic. And I should give thanks uh, to, to the co-authors, particularly Sylvia here uh, and Bayard, who've done a lot of work on this in the last couple of weeks. Um, so since I'm the first to speak, I'm going to dwell a little on, on, on this particular slide. Um, this is really just, uh, as I'm sure most of you are aware, a little bit of justification with regards to why we're doing work on this topic and why we think today is so important. Uh, it's also a good opportunity for those of you who unfortunately are meant to be next door to slowly pick up your things and, and relocate, <laughs> unless you wish to, to stay, uh, which, which I would recommend. So this is some data from the WHO, uh, country reported data that was submitted to the WHO in the last couple of years. And these are a, a selected number of conflict affected countries. And you can see that in each and every country there is uh, quite a substantial burden of, of NCDs. The problem that we face and the reason that we wanted to look at this in a little bit more detail is that the specifics and the finer details are, are very poorly understood. Um, and I'm sure it goes without saying for most of you that, that we see now that the burden of NCDs is certainly growing. Um, greater number of country, uh, greater number of middle income countries are affected by non-communicable diseases. We also see a global demographic shift, uh, aging populations and so on, which are, are, are proportionally m uh, more affected by NCDs. But also in, in crisis specific contexts, uh, some of the stresses related to crises, the um, relationship between health-seeking behavior, the relationship between unhealthy practices, uh, alcohol use, smoking, uh, drug use, and so on, and also the burden of mental health and the relationship between mental health and non-communicable diseases, which is well established, is something that I think we need to, to explore in more detail. And of course, in these crisis contexts, the breakdown of, of uh, health services and the treatment gap is also a very interesting um, area for further research. So back to the systematic review. Uh, this is the, the aim of the review and the overarching objectives. You'll see as we discuss some of the findings that we haven't really yet been able to do justice to some of the, some of the objectives, but as we move forward and as we, we, we work towards completing the review, we hope to have some, some, uh, some further details to share with you. So it goes without saying, the systematic review followed the PRISMA guidelines. Uh, we employed three arms in terms of the search terms, looking at crisis-related terms, terms related to non-communicable diseases, and terms related to the burden of disease. And we searched the usual databases plus grey literature sources. So we had um, some of the co-authors that work for humanitarian agencies were supplying uh, grey lit sources themselves, and we approached other agencies and other databases. But this is an ongoing process, and I will come back that to, to that as the end as we solicit more um, more, more papers from, from you. So we were looking specifically at, at crisis-affected populations, specifically civilians, so we didn't look at veterans. Uh, that was uh, quite a significant number of papers that looked at the combat veterans who were, were back in their home countries. We were looking specifically at low- and middle-income countries um, and also NCDs and their complications. And we only looked at quantitative studies. We had no language restrictions and no, de uh, no uh, time restrictions. So we picked up initially uh, just over 12,000 papers. We settled on 71 published study studies and a further 10 studies from, from the grey literature. <coughs> uh, this slide shows you the trend in publication over time. So the first study that we found was published back in 1990. We see a, a reasonably positive trend towards uh, further publication in the last five to ten years. Most of these studies since 2010 uh, are from the Middle East, uh, and many of the more recent studies uh, related to the, to the Syria crisis more specifically. 
here we have, we've broken down some of the, the papers by context, uh, and there are some interesting observations to be made here. The first on the, on the left here is really the, the, the lack of uh, published work coming out of, uh, related to, to the African continent, uh, which is quite dramatic, only one paper from, from the chosen study. Uh, likewise, only two papers that looked at uh, IDP populations specifically. Um, and just over uh, three quarters of the papers were focused on conflict crises. This is another interesting observation, certainly for those of you that are doing work or that intend to go on and do research in this particular area. Um, currently, a very uh, currently the evidence is very reliant on very poor quality data. Um, lots of routine uh, data reporting from, from hospital databases and so on, these sort of retrospective studies, um, which are, are, are methodologically quite poor. Um, only a handful of case control studies um, uh, and a lot of descriptive work. And this is perhaps the most, the most interesting of the slides. What sort of diseases have people been investigating? And some of the studies, I should say, were, were reporting on multiple different disease outcomes. So you'll see the total number here is, is more than the 81. Thank you. Um, but you see the big three there. So cardiac disease, uh, hypertension, diabetes, quite an interesting number of papers related to, to cancer as well. Um, and the seven other papers, we had one paper that looked at um, dermatological problems, another paper that looked at GI disease, only one paper actually that looked at GI uh, disease, which was quite interesting. Uh, and then a couple of renal papers as well, some stuff on arthritis, COPD and asthma. So where are the gaps? Um, you can see from, from the, the, the early data, we, the, the, the early findings that, that we've presented here that there are certainly a great number of gaps. One of the major problems that we've identified thus far is that there is a real lack of population level data. There are very few studies that are reporting um, at a population level. Um, and this makes it very difficult to, to, to look at, at issues related to access to care and, treat, uh, and the treatment gap and to really make strong statements regarding the, 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 act, uh, the, the burden of, uh, of disease in, the, in this particular population. Um, as I mentioned briefly, there's currently uh, uh, an over-reliance on very basic study methodologies, lots of descriptive work, uh, reliance on, on the retrospective analysis of routine uh, hospital data, very rarely uh, are we finding the use of control groups, uh, and, and often also some of these studies are making uh, fairly tenuous and quite interesting uh, causative links based on this fairly um, uh, poor quality data. There was one study in particular that uh, looked at retrospectively at some data from the conflict in the Balkans uh, and made some interesting uh, correlations between the conflict and the incidence of right-sided colon cancer, which was, was quite an interesting uh, study. Uh, and the quality of data. So uh, less than half of the papers are using validated diagnostic tools, which is something worth bearing in mind. And, and as I just mentioned, only one third of the paper are making uh, conclusions that we think they can really make based on the data that they have access to. So next steps, as I've said a couple of times, this is very provisional data. There is still more work to be done. Uh, we still need to go through with the second screening of the data uh, and the full quality appraisal, which is pending. Um, we would certainly like to identify more CRAE literature. We do feel that there is more out there. Uh, and this is a call to, to you. If you do have information that you think would be useful to us, please do get in touch with BIAD directly. Um, and similarly, as we're still in the fairly early stages of this study, we're really interested to hear what sort of research questions and what sort of information you would like to be extracted from this um, study. We have our own aims and objectives, but if there's anything that you think is missing from there, then, then now is a good time to discuss that. And we do hope to, to ultimately publish the final results in a paper <coughs> or a series of papers. So thank you very much. Uh, please do get in touch with Bayad if you have any further information, and I'm welcome to answer any, uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. So any um, quick questions of clarification? <coughs> and then any from our online this was audience? Question on the left, no. One question. Um,
sorry, just need to wait for the mic. Hi, thanks very much. I'm Ami Banerjee from UCL. Um, I uh, wanted to ask if there was any um, any articles referring to uh, training or degree of like w uh, workforce expertise in, in these areas, um, because as well as burden, want to know about uh, the resource to tackle it, because um, they usually aren't, even the, the um, the doctors and health professionals who go out there, there isn't expertise to deal with NCDs usually, um, or often. Uh, so, so I just want, wondered if that was tackled, um, both in, in the humanitarian forces and in the country level as well. Thank you. Sure, no, and that's a very interesting question. Um, I don't think that any of the papers that we have picked up as part of this review uh, approach that issue directly but it's possible that we have missed some of those papers because we were screening, particularly looking at, at burden of disease. So some of the search terms we used may actually have filtered out some of those studies. So it's difficult to say if there is any work that has been done on that. Slim Slama from WHO MRO. Um, I did myself a review. I need to share, actually, we were discussing with Philippa to share some of uh, the papers that uh, were never been publishing this, but about five to six years ago. What was interesting is before the CIR, CIR crisis, most of the papers that probably, I mean, you missed partially, were coming from Rita and Katrina, and mainly on disaster, not on conflict. Mm -hmm. But since five to six years, we have seen, I mean, emerging now a number of papers that are mainly on conflict. But before that, most of the paper that you can find out are mainly on disaster, not on, on conflicts, and mainly coming from uh, hurricanes, some of the earthquake related to Pakistan. So you probably have found <coughs> those those one as well. But uh, I think that there is something now happening also with there always a delay between, I mean, some of the events and the publication, of course. Uh, but I think that something are changing in, in the last years, mainly related to conflict uh, in, in the Middle East. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much, James. <laughs>